Yeah. Wait, Barbara, slow down. Tell me what happened, slowly. The RFP was just released on Sam.gov and I don't know what it says, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know what to do. Barbara, listen to me. I need you to do exactly as I say, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Barbara, you can do this, I know you can. I need you to put your hands on the mouse. Okay. Do you have your hands on the mouse now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now listen to me, Barbara. We don't have much time. I need you to scroll down to a section called Points of Contact. Tell me when you're there. Okay. Okay, I'm there. There should be a contact for contracting officer. Give me that number. Now I need you to shut your laptop and hide under your desk. I'll take care of it. Hello? I want you to listen to me. I don't know who you are or what you're trying to buy, but I have a very particular set of skills. Skills that I have acquired over a very long career in industry. Skills that would make my proposals valuable to you. I will find out what your requirement is, and I will submit a proposal that meets your needs. Okay. I hope that wasn't the pizza guy. I'm gonna need some help. Looks like I need to watch some videos from my favorite YouTube channel, ASI Education. <laughs> Submitting a proposal to an ambiguous RFP can be challenging, but there are some steps you can take to make things easier and increase your chances of success. Now here are six tips that we think will make a huge difference. Tip number one, just know your audience. Understand the customer before you submit your proposal. Now a lot of times this is just researching the government agency so you get a better understanding after they issue the RFP. This can help you gain an understanding of the needs, goals, and challenges of the particular agency that's releasing the RFP and where they need help. You can also review any past RFPs and look at any past contracts just to get a, an idea of their contracting style, uh, the incumbent landscape, and performance expectations. Just need to understand more about the agency. Now, ideally, this would happen before the RFP is even released based on a relationship that you have uh, built up. But if not, you just have to do a little bit of additional work to know more about who's asking for a solution for their problem. And that additional work is really going to help you make your bid, no bid decision. Now if you decide to bid, a thorough understanding about the customer will ensure your proposal is accurate, compelling, and authentic for the evaluators. Tip number two, just ask questions. Maybe the most obvious one, but if you don't know, if something is so ambiguous, just ask. Now, there are some rules around the procurement process that, especially after a solicitation is released, that will prevent you from having a long one-on-one -on -one conversation with a contracting officer about that requirement. So the official channel is question and answer, the Q&A. There will be a Q&A in almost every procurement, uh, and it's underutilized with a lot of companies. Now, the contracting officer will answer every single question submitted, and that's the best way for you to clarify some ambiguous terms. Also, if you miss the Q&A or you need an answer before that Q&A is, is released, it doesn't hurt to just pick up the phone and ask. The CEO will let you know if, uh, if it's not appropriate to answer the question, but you might as well give it a shot. Okay, tip number three, focus on your strengths. Bring receipts, right? If you did amazing, relevant work, then make sure you tell that story and you tell that story well. It may divert from the ambiguous terms and focus more on what you can provide. So we're gonna talk specifically about your experience and your past performance. 
In an ambiguous RFP, it's important to focus on your strengths and how they align with the agency's needs. Highlight your experience, specific expertise, and all the relevant past performance that demonstrates your ability to perform what they're asking you to perform. So with past performance, you especially want to focus on that relevant past performance. Now there's a formula that applies to past performance and we'll talk about with actually submitting a technical proposal, but you really want to follow the three-prong rule of state the problem, state your solution to that problem, and then show the benefits. So even in every past performance contract, what was the problem that the government had? What was the solution that you provided in your performance? And what were the benefits that your performance had on that agency's mission? If you don't have any experience or past performance with that particular agency, you're really gonna wanna tell the story of how your experience or what you've done in the past can set you up to exceed their expectations in this new work you're doing for them. Okay, that was the first three tips. We'll give you the next three after this very important message. I hear you're trying to get more information about the requirement. After we release the solicitation, you're trying to talk to us? I'm just trying to submit a good proposal that meets your needs. Let me tell you something, Mr. Whoever you are. This is a business. This is a very unique business with its own set of rules and regulations. But what about your mission? Let me tell you something. This is not about the mission. It's about compliance. Remove him from the competition. Do it quickly and quietly. Mr. Weaver and his associates are waiting for me in the parlor. Tip number four. Sometimes you can provide very clear and concise responses that could resolve the ambiguity. If the government may not know what they don't know, and that's why the problem statement looks the way it does, so tell them. In an ambiguous RFP, it's important to be clear and concise in your responses. Use plain language, but be sure to define any jargon or technical terms that you're trying to explain um, that may not be familiar with the agency. Now, this could be key to conveying a maybe a new approach or a solution uh, that wasn't necessarily thought of when they were writing their ambiguous language. Remember, your proposal has to stand on its own, so you want to make sure you're including all of the explanations of the jargon and, and the technical pieces of your proposal so your, your evaluators can understand what you're saying. Even if they're ambiguous, you don't be ambiguous. Here are some ways that you can fight their unclarity with your clarity. You can provide the government with your assumptions for the submission up front. Now, assuming that you meant this when you said this, here's what we'll do. You can define terms, acronyms, and other jargon as necessary to ensure that all readers in the room understand what you're saying. Uh, where appropriate, you can provide references to more information in case they need some help and they wanna do some more digging while they're doing their technical evaluations. And finally, a picture can be worth a thousand words. If it's appropriate, you can make a complex solution easier to understand just by having more visuals or charts. Now make sure whatever chart or visual you have that you have some kind of description where you describe what that chart means. Remember, you're fighting unclarity with clarity. Okay, tip number five in submitting a winning proposal to ambiguous RFPs. Just be flexible. Sometimes adaptation is key to survival in this jungle of federal contracting. Now, the agency may need to be open to different approaches or solutions, including some that they didn't even know about. So sometimes your flexibility can be gently exposing them to some things that they could be flexible about. But bottom line, just be flexible in your proposal and maybe even consider submitting alternate solutions or proposals. So don't be afraid to submit that second alternate solution as long as it meets or exceeds the requirements the government can decide whether or not they want to accept multiple uh, approaches. So another part of just being flexible is just not to get too frustrated with RFPs that are almost unreadable. Uh, many ambiguities are actually caused by factors outside of the control of the contracting office uh, due to regulations that they, they can't control. Uh, so be resilient, ask questions, and be prepared to lift and shift depending on what answer you get. Tip number six and final tip, consider teaming. If there's an aspect of the RFP that's maybe confusing to you or vague, maybe you should partner up. It could be that uh, you don't have all the necessary expertise or resources to fully meet the requirements of the RFP. So if you consider teaming up with other companies or organizations that can help you adequately fill all the gaps, 
that could be very beneficial. And they may even have ideas on resolving ambiguities that may be unclear to you, but could be clear to them. The goal here is to create a, a stronger proposal and increase your chances of winning. And if teaming is what increases that chance of success, then try to consider partnering up with another company. The key areas that you can benefit from partnering are improved past performance qualifications to gain additional experience in some of those areas, uh, additional expertise. You can gain access to additional technology or personnel who you wouldn't normally have on your team, and also more trust. You can build trust with a new government customer by maybe bringing in a partner that that customer has had experience with. So again, submitting a proposal to a cryptic government RFP can be challenging. But if you know that that RFP could give you an opportunity to win a contract because of your solution, then you should go for it. Just remember that knowing your audience, seeking clarification, focusing on your strengths, providing clearer proposals, being flexible, and considering teaming will set you up for greater success. Good luck. Now, back to our regular scheduled programming. Please, understand, this is not personal. It's just business. It was always personal to me. This is actually pretty good. <laughs>